there's no there's no weakness in 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 and speaking up um, and finding help and you'll find that if we ask one another there's usually people there that can help us so it's just having the courage to to have that conversation this was for you and you and you and you and you and you this was for you and you and you Hello for love everyone. Uh, I'm Bali Sione Sione. I would like to welcome you back to Organic Talano. Uh this week I've got a special guest, uh Jerry Seal Seal. Um so uh wellness, uh, wellness and education um uh, manager, uh different organizations he's uh, with as well. Uh, but um first and foremost want to just thank you for uh one um subscribing also to like and sharing the information or the stories that we've got out um, that we've been producing. Uh, but uh, once again, welcome into Organic Talanoa. And uh, welcome to yourself, uh, Jerry. Hello, Talofa. Kia ora, kia ora. Sione, now thank you for the uh, for the introduction and invite. It's good to be here. And so, um, yeah, now it's my pleasure to um, to take part. I uh, heard some cool things. So, um, you know, as a boy that grew up in uh, in Otara, a um, little bit about myself, I am... Um, Grew up to Notara, went to Tangaro College, and then I'm uh, currently living in Mangere, so I'm south side hard. Uh, played a little bit, uh, 132 games with the Warriors. Um, and uh, I try and remind my kids, yeah, I used to play, honest. No, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, no. So, and then, yeah, lucky enough to play for the Kiwis and Samoa. Uh, some good memories there. Uh, but currently, yeah, like you say, uh, the wellbeing and education manager at the Warriors. Uh, been doing the role off and on for the last 12 years. Um, took a year off, actually, to 12 months off to work down the road at the New Zealand Rugby League when the boys went across to uh, Australia because um, I didn't want to go. No. Yeah. yeah, so um, we did that. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I'm doing at the moment and enjoying my my different roles. Um, just for the same ones out there, I'm um, my mum is from Fangali, my dad is from a finger, so that's the the heritage there. Yeah. Um but I, I was born and and raised here, yeah, like I say, in uh, in Otara. Oh nice bro. Um I guess if we bring it back to uh Otara, mm. uh Tangaroa, like um your your experience probably coming through school. Uh I'm not sure if there was at that stage where there was uh dreams of uh probably moving into rep or even um or just wanting to play you know, for just fun and having, um, well, actually enjoying it with your friends. Uh, so what was that experience like coming for yourself? Yeah, no, you're right. It was like, there was a bunch of us, in, you know, it was back in the day, you just, you were friends with everyone in the street and even the the next street and the street across there. So uh, there was a whole bunch of Tongan Samoan boys and, man, we just like to go to school and play 50 on 50 ball rush, you know. Yeah. You know, there's some... Um, it was funny growing up, South Africa, because, um, you know, and then we had the Māori boys as well, the Cook Islanders. Uh, for me, I thought, I thought like, New Zealand's uh, Auckland was mostly Pacifica, yeah. you know, uh, uh, until one day I uh, went to university and I realised, oh, actually, it's uh, it's not like that. So anyway, <laughs> so, man, that's all we were doing at school was just, like, playing bull rush, um, trying to smash each other, and, and we watched a little bit of Winfield Cup and the All Blacks, and, you know, we knew all the different, you know, when it came on TV, so... But, you know, at our school too, uh, at Tangaro College, they had, uh, in the gym there, they had Tawera Nikau, um, the lead great, and they had Eric Rush, uh, both on the walls, eh? And I remember walking in thinking, oh, wow, that's mean that, yeah. you know, they used to go to, to Tangaro College. So a little bit of aspiration on that sense, but yeah, no idea we were going to go down the, the league path that we did. Uh, growing up too, like, uh, did you realise there's uh, actually a world outside of Otara? Uh, well, that's the funny, nah, because like, um, cause my dad passed when I was young and so we didn't have a lot of stuff and so, you know, we didn't even have a family car. So, you know, you sort of walk bus everywhere and so you don't want to bus too far, you know, <laughs> the Otara flea markets were sort of the limit that way on a Saturday and uh, Manukau. Uh, Manix, you know, it was it was probably the limit that way, and that was pretty much yeah. you know the world, eh? When we were growing up in the eighties and nineties, and um, yeah, yeah. So you know, I remember we went four form camp. I think was the first time we sort of left Auckland. I was like, oh wow, yeah, you know, there's a world outside of yeah. of of Auckland. So uh, yeah, good times, uh, but you know, don't um, you know, it was those rituals and authentic childhood, and, yeah. and you know, really enjoyed it. 
Uh, still, uh, still connecting with your your boys from back in the days. At the yeah, yeah, I do. There's a few of them um, who are actually in Australia now, oh, so nice. they've obviously expanded and uh, seen the world for themselves. And um, yeah, so uh, the main guys are in um, in Australia, but there's still one or two here uh, in Auckland floating around. Yeah, um, they were, I guess. Uh, Reason why I actually ran Tangaroa, like uh, actually coach at Tangaroa too with the uh, first of Dean with Sawa in them. Oh, is that right? So, yeah, oh, so it's wow. been good. It's been good yeah. with, uh, and I understand, totally understand with the boys, like um, oblivious to what happens outside of Otara because Otara is everything to them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the, like, um, yeah, I just, it's trying to help them, I guess, get their pathway into uh, and leading into things that uh, you've yeah. sort of experienced yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Actually, he was one of the twins. He, he was one of the cool guys at school. <laughs> so, no, nah, it's cool to hear that he's yeah, back, yeah. going back to the school. Um, for yourself, I guess, now the pathway and you've experienced them, um, like, uh, did you ever feel at some stage uh, where it was quite tough for you uh, being a boy from Otara, mm-hmm. uh, trying to uh, move your way into, make your way into the rep sides and that, or um, it was actually quite easy through uh, maybe your talents at that stage? No, it was it was uh, it was an interesting trip and journey, and and I tell the story because um, we didn't plan to make rep teams, you know, but we, we were we we're fortunate. There were good people along the way. I remember my under fifteens coach. He said at the time, "We're going to take you to a trial," and so they came. They picked us up. They took us. They even bought us boots, you know. And so thankful eh, for people like that. That um, you know, they they gave and and were hospitable and generous that way. Um, and so. It, it basically went went to under fifteens trial. Didn't make the team. Um, didn't really make a rep team till I was uh, twenty one. Uh, yeah, so I was a late a late bloomer myself. Um, and then was fortunate enough to you know to play for ten years after that. But um, yeah, it was, I suppose the, the Tangaroa toughness was the thing that got me there. But I, I, yeah, I didn't get recognised till mm. till late. Um, actually, I was twenty one. I was playing at Mangere East, and I. Um, we were under 19s then, and I was like, um, uh, I didn't want to go because I got asked to come to join County's Manica, which is the the next rep team up. And part of me was like, oh, I'd just rather hang with the boys, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because in, in our team at that time was Mark Hunt, who's gone on to, you know, to UFC yeah, yeah. greatness, eh? But, and he was our main guy. Anyway, so there was a bunch of guys here that I was hanging out with, and, and I thought, oh, I didn't really want to um, venture out too much. Uh, but to their credit, you know, some of them were like, "Oh, you should go represent us." You know, it'll be that'll be us with you. So, you know, for for that kind of encouragement, I ended up um, again taking a coach's invitation. There was a guy called Mala Sala Male Sala uh, doing great stuff in the health area now. But um, he used to pick me up, take me as another player, yeah, yeah. and we used to go training at the Velodrome. Well, lucky for me too, it wasn't too far from where I lived. Uh, in Otara, so was able to get to training all right. Uh, good to mention uh, Malasala, uh, Alelua. Uh, Ozzy, uh, for myself, he's a cultural mentor as well. Oh, right, so, yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, I know he was deadly too when he, came, he, he was, was coming the man, yeah. <laughs> um And his brother Ray, is, uh, oh, uh, Ray yeah, yeah. they're doing well as well. So, mm. um, I guess when we, uh, when I think about um, just your line of work mm. coming through now, um, in particular, probably working in with the, the younger ones that are slowly stepping in. Mm. Um, how are you finding how they're handling, uh, I guess, uh, pressure of performance mm. or um, even adjusting with um, normal patterns of being at training on time? You know, how, yeah. how are you finding that with the... No, it is. It's a big step from going um, from an under 17. I find even the, the under 18, some of them, may hey, it's still a big step. We... We're signing kids at like 14, 15. Yeah, so um, it's lucky we well, it's not, it's it's good that we're back in New Zealand now because now we can spend some time with those kids and and the high performance staff can spend time with those kids preparing them because, man, it's a big step. And we, we're still finding it now. Uh, guys who like ripped it up in their grade, yeah. obviously very good. But, um, but in order to perform at the highest level, you need good habits. And so that's what we're just trying to help uh, those kids with. And it's a, it's a big step for many of them. Uh, nutrition, um, getting to training on time. But there are some pressures. Eh? Some parents are working, so they can't get them there. Um, a lot of uh, young men coming to the club and with no license, so yeah. unable to drive themselves. You know, so all those kind of things we're trying to help guys recognize, hey, to realize this opportunity, we need to sort some of that stuff out. 
has it been easy for you um, to be now amongst uh, the Warriors and I guess probably even New Zealand setup mm. um, in terms of helping, um, I guess, these organisations understand uh, Pacific families mm. that uh, I guess is more than just uh, the player, you know, being late, uh, looking at issues behind that? Oh, 100%. And um, it's still a growing space in, in the NRL. Um, Australian team, no. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, they... Um, it's still a growing space, but it's come a long way since when I first joined in, in 1997, eh? Uh, back in the days, it was just harden up and, and and just make it work to where, you know, we're recognising a lot of the different factors that are affecting players. And so that's that's good in that sense. Um, and I find myself, like, doing home visits and talking to parents as much as we can, involving the whole family in, in the journey of this young man. So and I think that's an important part of um, helping guys. Yeah. Always key building those relationships, uh, especially with the families, um, especially when you want to get the best out of the player. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, those little things do matter um, and do matter to the family, see, that, uh, you know, you are willing to uh, build that relationship. No, you, you're right, 100%. And um, just that respect factor and and um, just understanding um, also, you know, the, the particular situation, yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, for, for many of our families, uh, there's obviously a financial uh, lucrative reward associated with, you know, being um, in professional sports. So there's that aspect. But then, like you said before, it's like where they're starting now, it's still a long way to go. Yeah. Mm. The education piece is, do you, so do you, would you, um, if you're talking with the player around um, uh, financial understanding, like mm. of the money, so is that like bringing the whole family in to understand if they're young, if they're, if they're mm. young? Yeah, so it depends on the player and their particular story, you know what I mean? Because um, some players are like uh, maybe second, third generation yeah. Pacifica, so then they're a little bit more, like the parents are like, oh, no, he sorts his own stuff, you know, and then they're a little yeah. bit more uh, mainstream. Uh, but I find that uh, uh, if the parents are from the islands, uh, then there is that. And so yeah. we need to bring it and have a discussion about what it looks like and just different ways that can maybe achieve the same goal. Um, but um, doing it so that, you know, it's everyone's looked after. Yeah. Um, did you go over, uh, were you on Oz as well when the, the team was there in, um, for the lockdown? No. Well, I only went for the first uh, three months and then um, – yeah, and then I, I stayed back here. Yeah. Mm. Um. How did you find? How did you find the boys were uh, coping? Um. At that stage, being or oh, having to be based there. Yeah, it was hard. It was hard for them in the end. The two, well, basically three years that yeah. they were away affected all the players that um that that were uh, away from home, away from family. So that man, it was massive, eh? Yeah. And it was a big sacrifice. So it did affect many players, um, especially the ones with families or young families yeah. and the support networks back here with the big ingers. Um, or the, you know, just their family network was back here. Um, but I found that the guys that were maybe um, young, free, and single, they they were ready to mingle. No, <laughs> they they were a little bit more uh, enjoying the whole. Yeah. Like, wow, this is like I'm I'm my flash as hotels getting paid for, and I'm I'm living this life. And yeah. if it was for a couple of the boys, it was like, wow, this is cool, man. Um, and, and a couple of them found girlfriends over there. Anyway, so you know, for them, you know, it just depended on who the who the person was. Was there a big difference in the lockdown? Um, like uh, with them, uh, how they were approaching in Australia or where the Warriors were based mm. um, compared to what you what I experienced over here. Um, well, here was tough. Like the restrictions here were, um, I think, a lot tougher at the beginning. Um, but because it was the NRL, they had their own measures, so it was very uh, regimented over yeah. there. So there was a stage there in the lockdown um, experience where they were all locked in their in their hotel and mm. they couldn't leave, but they could see the average Joe like walking up and down the street and having fun on the beach. They could see the beach, but they weren't allowed outside of the hotel. Yeah. So there was a bit of their experience where um, some of them felt like they were in prison, but you know that was the nature of just where the competition was at. Yeah. When I'm looking at uh, the education, the wellness side for yourself, mm. uh, did you, uh, is this something you studied or was it uh, kind of um, once you had finished, then they sort of pushed you, maybe this could be an avenue for you? Yeah, it was a weird one because when I finished playing, I actually trained to be a teacher and um and so I was in the final stages of um, 
So I finished a Bachelor of Arts, uh, and then while I was playing, I finished a Bachelor of Education. Um, so when I finished playing, I thought, oh, it might be easy to transition into teaching. Yeah. Um, but lo and behold, the qualification changed, and they said I needed to go back and do a year certificate for registration. And at that point, um, the Auckland Rugby League said, come across and run our schools program. So then I, you know, I ended up falling into that. And while I was there, um, the Warriors said the under-20s competition started with the NRL in 2008. But then a big part of that whole competition was making sure everyone had um, study options. Yeah. And so then they began each of these pl- – um, each club had to have a person that was managing that. And that's where the role sort of was created. And the first guy that had it was Dean Bell yeah. um, in 2008. But then in 2010, he moved on to be the general manager of football, signing everyone's big contract. So <laughs> then they said to me – and then that's where it said they were like, when to come across and, and run this – because previous year to 2009, Sonny Fye had passed away tragically yeah. and a few of the boys were experiencing um, mental health challenges yeah. and so associated with the loss. And so that was the opportunity to come across and, and do some stuff. The mental wellness side is, um, I guess, the, is, is that a, like uh, something that's uh, built up or come from, uh, one, the intense training that you guys go through mm. and I guess the pressures – um, maybe just in the competition because I'd say NRL isn't the easiest of uh, comps to be involved in. Is that something that's developed through there? Like you've noticed it's uh, more common now? Mm. It's a good question. Like like all uh, professional sports people um, experience some kind of anxiety just due to the performance. Yeah. Eh? And so there's different strategies, how to manage all of that stuff. Um, but, you know, with with – I'm talking about the uh, rugby league uh, specifically. There are different pressures that impact on players and affect yeah. their performance. And so, and some of that stuff is family. Some of that stuff is finance. It's, some of the stuff is relationships. So you know, depending on the player, we just got to help them to try and be the best that they can for the for the 26 rounds that the competition is at play. And mm-hmm. you know, it's pretty much half the year, right? Eh? So there is pressure to perform, um, but also pressure when you get dropped, you yeah. know, and then obviously um, it affects your financial well-being and and your prospects of staying in the industry. So the stats are the stats, and yeah. it's not a long career for many people. For 95%, it's just an experience, yeah. you know, and, and there's a handful that maybe have a long career and can make some decent coin. Yeah. Um, when we're looking at, uh, I guess, getting dropped on that, mm. um, so I don't know if you come across uh, too many players or situations where a uh, bit of depression starts yeah. coming in. Like yeah. I don't know, uh, for yourself, you, uh, do you have a, um, a method like or a way of working uh, through with that player? So what we try and do is try and understand right from the get-go, like um, like this time of the year is perfect. Yeah. It's pre-season, yeah. no one's lost the game and no one's been dropped yet and everyone's like keen to win it. Next year's the year. You know, so everyone's of that mentality. So it's a good time then to understand where, where are you, where, what's your story, you know? Yeah. Where is it that you want to get to and what are the things that are impacting on your life at the moment? You know, it might be um, some some guys have kids, some guys they just want to buy mama and dad a house. Mm. So you know, just understanding what's their worldview, what's their their end goal in terms of this, in terms of the profession. So if you can understand the guy's story and where he's trying to get to, then it's a lot easier to help them when they get dropped. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, as part of our whole co papa is to try and get them started on their on their other career while they're with us. Yeah, that's probably the big part is uh, sometimes <laughs> focus so much on the on the footy and that or the mm. whatever the sport is, um, but not thinking about the um, the actual plan for after and see. Yeah, man, because it ends quick, eh? You yeah, know? yeah. And even the guys that play long, they 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 say, man, it's amazing how fast it went. So, do you ever come across cases where like some may have left it too late, but uh, I mean, they still. I know how you would work out, like how you, how would you be able to sort of sort them out for afterwards, like mm. uh, for after footy? Have you even come across any cases like that? There are some guys who um, who have tried stuff. I, I remember one guy who was a very good player and went to England even and done some stuff over there. He come back to New Zealand. He settled. I want to buy a cafe, and so he bought a cafe. But um, because he didn't have the the business background, yeah. it, it didn't it wasn't quite successful. But what he did was he retrained as a as a builder and um, as a carpenter. And now he's a very good builder, um, was able to do some coaching stuff. He's very happy with life as it is now with him, his family, his kids. But for him, yeah, it didn't start till after he left. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, there's a, quite a few guys, high-profile guys who've gone into building. Um, 
and, and find that very um, very rewarding. Yeah. So um, for for a few of them, yeah, they didn't start that until they they finished. Yeah, I'm probably more the hands on stuff, and um, I guess it's the 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 whole thing about seeing nothing there, then creating, you know, like even building a simple wall is like, oh, oh yeah, exactly, I exactly, did that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess when you were like uh, for yourself, uh, you played a few grand finals. You- we just played the one, 2002, yeah. uh, 2003. It was a good time in the uh, Warriors history, actually. We made the eight for the first time, 2001, 2002. We got to the grand final and lost. In 2003, we were one game away, but we, we lost to Penrith, who ended up winning it. And there were a whole, whole bunch of hummels on that side. My cousin was on the side. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. We had them, too. Yeah, yeah. Some of us look back at that game because it was probably a better team than the 2002 team. But, yeah, on the day, they got us. Was well, that how was that, bro? Like, um, I don't know if that's. I mean, you would have experienced it the first time, but like mm. the experience, um, just being the stadium, that much noise, like yeah, uh, yeah. It was it was funny because uh, I was a little bit older, and um, what was it, two thousand two? I think I was like twenty, maybe twenty twenty eight, and so um, you know, because I trained as a PE teacher too, we we done some like sports psych stuff in terms of being calm in the moment. So I, I was able to process it using some strategies and stuff that, that I've been familiar with. But I noticed with some of the young guys, it, man, it was like overall, you know, it was like, wow, you yeah. know, you run now, the, the din, the noise, eh? And then um, I must admit, even then I, I got the butterflies, eh? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you try to breathe, stay calm, and you focus on your role. You come out, the noise hits you, and you're like, oh, jeez, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you got that little thing sitting in your gut, Um so actually a funny story. There was uh, I was playing with a guy. His name was Mark Tuki, big Mark, and he was a good, good <laughs> fella. Eh? But um, before that, we ran out. I says to him, "Hey, I'll get the first kickoff." He goes, "Yeah, no, no worries." And then as we go to run out, he sprints past me and he goes and gets the first kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was a thing we laugh about now. But then because um, the next carry is the donkey carry, you know, where you're just going into the hut, um, the teeth of the deep. Anyway, so yeah, so it was. It was um, it was massive, um, and you know, thankful that we even got there. It was a dream ride yeah. in terms of the year, just a, an era and the club's history too. Um, I think the whole country went on a ride. It was back in the days of the telegram, and yeah. there were so many faxes and stuff stuck on the wall, and you know, before texts and what have you. And you know, you really felt the the, the love and the aroha from the whole country. Yeah, eh? you know, there being messages from all over the place. Hey, eh? it was crazy. Uh, that yeah. would have been real. I mean, I mean, it's experience of a lifetime, you know, mm. like one we could only imagine, but you experienced it, which is, uh, man, like awesome to see, especially for your family. Like, um, I guess around, uh, with your, your family, the, the support that, um, mm. they have, they've actually been through this journey with you too, eh? So how was it for them? How was it for, I don't, I'm not sure whether your kids were quite young yeah. at that stage. Um, and your wife, like, how was the the pressures of being oh, with the NRL uh, mm, star, mm. star or like you're both national, international as well? So, yeah. how was that for her? Oh, I don't know about star, maybe a monster. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, it was funny because, you know, being Pacific, I sort of you carried the whole family, yeah. So, for mum, yeah. uh, it was mum, my six sisters, and one brother, you know, the man, they all went on the right, eh? And so um, I was getting a lot of tickets to say that much. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, flew mum over and uh, the girls come over. And um, and then my wife at the same time, um, she, you know, she, she had the kids. There were three kids. Uh, so, so we had like three kids under five at one stage. And um, so she was busy and she was flat out. And here I was like, oh, man, I'm going for this four <laughs> days and then I'll be back. And then I'll be like, oh, I'm going for five days this week. You know, so it was a bit like yeah. that for her. It was tough for her, eh? But, um, but you know, she was um, – I just left a card with her and then she was happy. No. Uh. And, you know, but then, you know, it was it was a cool ride for everyone. And we look back and and, um, and have good memories. But it's funny that when you say about the kids, eh, because um, – because of that success, we were able to get a contract over in England and then there's a boy from Otara going and experiencing, yeah. you know, the world and going, oh, wow, wow, cheats, oh, okay, you know, and there's the Queen's house and, you know, so all that kind of stuff was yeah. cool. And so we took the kids around and, and showed them quite a few countries over in Europe and that. Uh, but here's the thing. But, you know, for all of that, um, you know, about five years ago, we tried to show them the photos and then they go, oh, I don't remember. <laughs> so it's probably more for our benefit. Yeah, and yeah. the kids just enjoyed the ride. But um, no, it was a good time. Oh, I was thankful for the career, thankful for the way um, sport can, you know, open up that opportunity mm. for some of us to 
to experience that kind of stuff. It's probably something we drive with, uh, especially the the young kupulanga, the young ones mm. coming through. Is like you know, use it as a, a vehicle, you know, to sort of get to the next stage. Um, yeah. They realize, man, they, you know, some of you are talented, man. Some of these players are talented. No, hundred percent, and um, and you know, but it is true too. Like um, you know, talent is common, eh? And and if we can, like we were saying in the beginning, if they can find the um, the strategies and the disciplines that will help them focus that, eh? Yeah. Into a sword that they can wield, into a thing that they can use, then yeah, they'll be better for it. Um, I find that the kids that. Yeah, yeah. It's always tough for if you've if you've been the if you if you've been the man the whole time in grade eight, and then you get to that level, and everyone's kind of similar, yeah. you know. And at the same time, um, you know, you actually need to be some base fitness. You know, there's there's always a challenge for those yeah. guys. And but if they can step to the next level, those guys just flourish. Eh? Uh, did you think a bit smarter as you're getting older in the, in the game uh, for training? Oh, hundred percent. But the coaches, <laughs> the coach we had at the time was good too. Eh? He um, um, yeah, he, he allowed us to do some stuff and not other stuff, yeah, and yeah. so that was good. Um, no, yeah, I, I um, uh, no, there's just some funny stories, but yeah, <laughs> um, you know, we're coming, uh, so now for yourself, mm. so uh, because you've been in that uh, environment for so long, and mm. I just think that your body is so used to you know a regime of training, um, so for now, like. Like, uh, what does jury do now? Like, what do you oh, do for yourself? Oh, yeah, no, huh? good question. Actually, probably not not, not the um, ideal picture of what a person should do after because um, I like sitting at my desk, which is, you know, for the most part, an office job. And um, and so, you know, a lot of the boys like to catch up over food. So, yeah. and I enjoy a good feed too. So <laughs> maybe not a lot in terms of the physical stuff. Uh, but in saying that, uh, a bunch of friends and I, we were taking on this challenge recently um, to try and uh, do it a bit differently. Oh, so we've been on this journey for about six six weeks now. So we'll see. And there's another six weeks to go. So we'll see how we go. But um, some players we used to play with, like Ali Lawititi, yeah. uh, Hami Lawaki, um, Shone Famuina, Poro Hihi. So there's a few of us just um, in it at the moment. But um, so, yeah, so we, we're doing some training at the moment. But, yeah, I'm just saying, Shone, you know, in terms of the, <laughs> the, what is it? It's been a while now since I've been retired. Um, probably not always um, at my optimum health and fitness. It's, I mean, it's hard, like, even uh, once you, yeah, once you sort of trying to get back in the routine again, yeah. um, because, you know, sometimes it's not prioritized anymore, eh? And well, that's <laughs> right. It, it's, um, uh, you know, just the way, oh, I, I'm not blaming it. I'm just saying, just the way we do some of our stuff, too. It's always around me, eh? It was around yeah. food, eh? So it's very easy to, um, to go a different way. Um, yeah, and my wife's uh, like she's she's quite into her pastry cooking in there. So, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, bring it on down, darling. You all just enjoy that. So anyway, not so, one to say no. Way. Well, we're not to one to say no. <laughs> it's funny, like because these, these are guys like um like Monty Beef and yeah. Wide Angie Corpu, man, they're in great shape. Oh, and they they Ruben Wiki yeah. is another one. They love the endorphins of exercise. Eh? <laughs> I was like, oh man, if if it's not for a game, I don't see the point of training. <laughs> No, but no, we like I say, we 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 recognise as we get older, it's important to um to look after our bodies too. Quite funny, you mentioned uh, Hami Lawaki because oh, yeah. I used to work with him, and that guy could sniff out a good feed anytime, <laughs> man. As all of a sudden he turns up, and man, how did you know there was a feed on? Yeah. <laughs> so he was one powerful oh, human, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a, he's one of those young kids that are like 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 uh, was raw talent, owned the grade, and he was able to make the adjustments. Hey, eh? uh, so yeah, uh, credit to Hami. Yeah. Um, with yourself, like in, um, I guess, in community wise, like mm. uh, uh, maybe within church yourself, like mm. do you um, uh, do you work in with groups within the church? Um, maybe some men's groups or even the youth as well. Like, do you do any mentoring through there? Yeah, no, we're quite busy with church life. It's a big part of our life um, with the family. We, yeah, we we mate, we spend four days a week there, and then. Um, the church also is involved in the local league club, yeah. so a lot of the um, guys are involved with the. Bay Rusco Rugby League, so we find ourselves there Monday, Thursday, and during the season, eh, we shucks, we're all there like carrying water bottles and yeah, you know, the sun plays. So we're quite involved in the local sports club. Um, then there's fundraising stuff and you know, what have you. Um, and then you know we're through work we've partnered with Leva, so we run um, Fathers for No, yeah. um, which is a neat partnership where we just um, talking with fathers. There's a neat guy there, Charles Lavea, who who runs it. And um, 
just giving uh, fathers a platform, a uh, uh, space to uh, you know to to follow the fala and just have a conversation yeah, like, like yeah, we're doing yeah, here yeah. and be a safe space for one another to support one another. Yeah, because some things we share similar and, and other things you maybe just need someone to bounce off. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, so that, that's a cool little program that um, it's been going for the good part of twelve months now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the other one we we're doing is we're going around rugby league clubs. We're running the mental health program with mm-hmm. Leva and. Again, it's just teaching tools and strategies around uh, mental, just coping and dealing with your own mental health. Because eh? like we say, we try and tell them, like, it's like our physical health. Everyone's got it. Yeah. Everyone's got mental yeah. health. It's just managing it when it's, you know, not so well. Yeah. So, so, so it's a little program. Um, the Warriors have been called. They they bring their bus. And so we send the bus to the local club. Mm. They fill it up. We bring them back to the Warriors. They have a bit of a training session. And then we go into the room and we talk and you know, about these things that, that often would be a taboo topic or, you know, yeah. and we just thrash it out for a good hour and a half and, you know, we have a bit of fun and play a few games. So, yeah, it's a cool little kopapa that we're just trying to um, enable our people to have those conversations, those talanoa yeah. around, around mental health. Um, good too, because by the time you – is it is the exercise before or after the – the exercises usually after. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I'd say a lot of them be struggling after burpees, uh, man. Uh, yeah, because uh, Cover King loves that sort of stuff, man. Nah, that's right, that's <laughs> right. Because, um, yeah, like, if we exercise, we found that so with some of our teenagers too, if we exercise them before, some of them would just come straight from school, yeah. then we before and we put them in the room, woo, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned it there with uh, schools because uh, some of them – I signed early. They signed early into the Warriors and that. Mm. And is that like, um, is that full time training for them, or is it just like part uh, part time? I guess mm. the other side is the education part for them. Yeah. So the, what what the Warriors have done this year? They're born in a SG ball program, so that's an under nineteen competition. So that kicks off in February, basically. So some of them actually started training for that in uh, beginning of November. So they're coming in training three days a week, basically. Yeah. So that's the requirement there. They come in, usually kick off about five o'clock. Um, they do training, weights, and then they try and mirror uh, without at the same intensity what the first graders do. Yeah. So, um, again, they're just trying to build those pathways because um, the Warriors haven't had it for three years just so that we can maybe churn out some talent and do something in the competition. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, it's awesome, bro. Like, um, I guess uh, just winding up, Mm. Um, they the uh, <laughs> telling always always go fast, but I guess he's in terms of like yourselves, like man, there's so much story. I know you're going behind, but uh, you know, I just always uh, worry about our timings too. So, mm-hmm. um, for yourself, bro, like, um, uh, I guess uh, just a word of encouragement there, uh, for probably our community, yeah. um, even for um, uh, uh, me in the general because mm. it's uh, like there's a program that kind of supports them as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, bro, I'll let you just sort of finish off and then sure, we'll just yeah. uh, yeah, wrap that up, wrap it up. Maybe for me personally, something that's been strong in my life for a long time is um, is my faith and, and who Christ is. And I believe he is the way, the truth, and the life, and like he says. And so I know a lot of our people um, understand that. And I like to think there's, there's strength there that we sometimes don't use. And so it's just understanding that. But at the same time also, it's it's um, there's no there's no weakness in, 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 in speaking up um, and finding help. And you'll find that if we ask one another, there's usually people there that can help us. Yeah. So it's just having the courage to, to have that conversation. Oh, nice. Thank you very much, uh, Jerry. Um, thank you also to our listeners that have uh, uh, copped or listened in to um, our Talanoa. Um, awesome uh, uh awesome messages or our value in the stories that uh, Jerry has shared. Um want to just thank uh, our crew uh, with uh, Will, uh, Guy and Miranda. And um, yeah, once again, just uh, subscribe, um, like and share, because uh, uh, you'll see this on our YouTube channel on Organic Talanoa. So from uh, both myself and Jerry, they love also. They love us, Eva. This was for you and you and you and you and you and you this was for you and you and you. Da 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 da.